build a rig. Thanks, Brian. Well, not a surprise. I think I've read uh, what this <laughs> is all about. Uh, but I'm very pleased to officially announce that John Mosellock has agreed to continue his great work at the Cardinals for an additional two years beyond this year. So uh, really a, a three-year commitment, which we're very pleased about. As you all well know, we've had 15 winning seasons since he was named uh, GM and then subsequently president of baseball operations. Prior to that, he had a big impact on success that we had under Walt Jockety's regime. Grew up in really the Cardinal system uh, from a front office standpoint. Did it all, ran drafts, uh, signed players, was involved in uh, trades, and uh, despite his youth, one of the longest tenured uh, president of baseball ops or GMs in, in MLB. We're in a really good position. Um, Won 93 games last year with um, some terrific veterans and young players who came through the system and graduated out of the minor leagues and made a big impact and I know will make a continued impact in the future. The good news is that uh, despite that success and movement of young players into leading roles with our current team, we still have a top-ranked farm system. And that's hard to do. It's hard to win and continue to develop, draft and develop uh, at the same time. And uh, Mo has created an environment and, and leadership with our front office from a baseball standpoint that has ensured, in my view, continued success as we move into the future. Uh, he has great people working under him and uh, has done a terrific job on all fronts. So with that, I'll welcome John Mosellock for another three years. <laughs> well, first, thank you, Bill. Um, you know, as I was thinking about like what I want to say today, I, I came with to one word and it's, I'm lucky. And, you know, you think about all the different jobs you can have in sports and the type of people you work with. I happen to work with Bill DeWitt who I think most people would agree is one of the best owners in all of sport. And so when you do what I do, having ownership support is, is critical to, to being able to create that successful model over time. Then you look at our, our front office. You know, I'm so fortunate to work with a group of just bright, innovative, creative people that are always challenging each other. And so, you know, I'm grateful for that. And then the other reason I'm, I'm, I'm super lucky is, is you think about like our major league staff run by Ollie and his group. I mean, we all get along, we have fun. Um, we don't always have to agree on stuff, but we, you know, it's, it's engaging. And then you look at what we've been able to accomplish on the player development side and the scouting side. You know, we have great people running these things and we're having a lot of success with it. And so you certainly admire the group of people that, that we get to work with day in and day out. And it's also a privilege to work in the city of St. Louis. You think about a fan base that truly cares about the type of product you put on the field. Um, you, you know, when you look at our market size relative to other uh, cities in, in baseball, yet we still draw over three million. And um, you know, I'd like to think that's not by accident, but I also understand that that uh, we're grateful for that support. So, you know, finally, as we look ahead, you know, the the reason we agreed on this was was we felt like stability was important we looked at at where we've been what we're still trying to do our goal is to still win a world series and we're going to put our best foot forward on that but we also um, are grateful for what we have below and how we continue to build on that so you know i do think it's an exciting time bill touched on it uh, we have a very strong major league club. We have a really strong minor league system. You combine that with an outstanding scouting staff, it usually leads to a pretty successful model. So um, super excited about the next few years. I know there's going to be some change coming over the next few years. Um, we certainly want to give individuals at the company and within the organization opportunities to grow, um, expand some of their roles, and uh, over the course of the next year or so, we'll work through all of that. So at that, I'll take a few questions. Well, 
by my count, at the end of this this new deal here, that'll be 30 years for you with the Cardinals. Can you just sort of reflect on, I don't know, the meaningfulness of, of that milestone and, and what it means to you to have that long? Well, I, I guess it's uh, longevity usually means uh, you're, you're you're in a good spot and you've you've created something that people feel it's worth bringing you back for and. You know, I think about over my time with the Cardinals, I started at a entry level position and then to be sitting here next to Bill over that time, I, I think uh, it speaks volumes for the opportunities I was given and, and was able to take advantage of those. And Mo, as you uh, navigate these next few seasons, how is the exorbitant spending of other teams going to possibly affect or not affect the way you guys handle your regime? You know, I skipped over a bullet point how I was going to be grateful to work with you guys for the next three years. And then second question, and we're on payroll question. So that was fast. Um, you know, I think like, like, you know, Bill and I look at a lot of things when we make decisions on, on how we spend or how we invest. And, and uh, I, I think the worst thing you want to do is just have a simple copycat model. Because someone's doing it, then you feel you have to do it, right? And so... I think what we, we've done over the last 30 years is we do what we think's best for us. And um, I would imagine that model's not gonna change. Now, people are gonna say like, ah, oh, geez, you know, Bill and Mo are just satisfied with getting to October. No, you know, we, we, we like the big shiny thing that you put on your ring finger, that's cool. You know, grabbing that trophy is amazing. And that's what we're gonna stride for. But how we go about it might be a little different than some of our competitors. wanted to see through I mean you look at all the stuff going on with the team right now not just the major league club but on the horizon the talk about how do you fill a rotation the facilities changed here are, are there things that you wanted to see through completion you know it's like Bill and I were talking you know through this over the last uh, seven months or so you know one of the things that, that did definitely come to the forefront is is some incomplete projects if you will and and so you know, this being one of them, um, you know, was, was a part of this back in 98, but now um, we're going to have an opportunity to, to see uh, this get expanded and rebuilt. So there's, there are some projects within that I just think would be helpful to, to still have me around for. And, you know, ultimately, uh, some of the things I do day to day, we're going to try to give other people some exposure to that over time. But, you know, short term, You'll still get me for a little bit, but um, as as we get deeper into this contract, there will be some changes. Yeah, and a little bit of, of when you think about like the, the the people I work with, just giving them a little bit more breadth of, of what they are involved in. Talking yeah. to me, yeah. Um, well, TBD, but we, you know we have excellent people under Mo who have really grown, and um, you know I think we've got a bright future from a personnel standpoint. Uh, picking up on what he said about the <coughs> ballpark, I remember how excited I was when I came over and looked at this property when it was just empty, and I I met with uh, uh, MacArthur Foundation. And, sort of the dream of building a stadium and now there's been that much time that it's going to be torn down and we're building another one so you know I'm excited about uh, the new uh, Roger Dean Stadium as it as it'll develop and um, you know continue obviously to be excited about our team and, and kind of our position I, I think as I said earlier we're really in a great spot with uh, our major league club and the young guys who came up last year and did so well and not even counted in, in our, our farm system ranking. The biggest thing over 15 years was we've never had the rebuild. We've never had the, you know, tear it down, have a couple painful years and then hope for the best on the end. And I think like when you're, when you're trying to, to appease a fan base, especially one that shows up in such numbers of, of three million and more a year, I think they're grateful for the type of product that we roll out there. And, and so, look, you know, we understand that the, the, the ultimate goal is, is to be the last man standing. But um, when you think about sort of that journey to get there, 
uh, you know, we do take a lot of pride in, in winning years. I think one thing I would add to that is the winning years are great. And um, I think a key point is that we've played very few games over that period of time that were not meaningful. I mean, even when we, uh, you know, didn't make the playoffs, we were right in it to the end. So, you know, we've got wonderful fans. They support us. And, you know, it's our job to keep them interested and, and continuing to support us. So, I mean, I think that's something we don't think about too much, but it's a, it's a great uh, record and tribute to the work that Mo and his staff have done. So how do you strike that balance when fans are getting antsy that they want a little deeper run and what you have to do in terms of best interest of the ball club and sometimes long run? How do you strike that balance from your position? Well, I, you know, I think, I think that's just an odd argument in the sense of that, like, you know, we, everybody in that building, everybody standing behind you, they want a long run, right? But like, just because you want it doesn't mean it happens, right? And I think like how we think about adding to our club or investing in our club is always about what can help us now, but what's, how's that gonna position us later? And, you know, there's two ways of, of attracting talent, right? And, and one is you can go out in the free agent market and acquire it, or you can go out and trade for it. And you can think about like two of our, two of the best players in that clubhouse right now were traded. Four. Actually, three if you count Adam Wainwright going way back. So the, the point being is, like, we're always looking at what those acquisitions might look like. And, and of course, when, when you look at this past offseason when people were saying, oh, we should do X, Y, and Z, again, we were looking at it in terms of what's the incremental cost to do that versus what we have. And we felt like what we have is better than what we might go get. And so, you know, that's the bet we're making, and we'll see. And, and we hope that that the consistency of how we've performed over the years um, will give us a little bit of street credibility or at least internal credibility for that decision making. Was it an Well, I think the most exciting thing we have is obviously we have an amazing core on our major league club right now, but we also have some dynamic players coming up through our system. So. You know, the key will be how do we augment that and where do we do that? Is it free agent? Is it trade? But it's a it's a great foundation to build on. And so when people ask me, like, am I excited about 2023? Yeah, but I'm also excited about 2025. I mean, there's a lot to, to be excited about here with the St. Louis Cardinals. Is this an easy decision for you? If it wasn't, can you take us through your thought process <laughs> and committing to another three years? Yeah, so I think, like Bill would agree, it's it, it, – I love my job, like I love what I do, but there's parts of me that wondered like if there was something else I could be doing in my life. And, and you know, I look back at the last 15 months and those were some, some difficult times internally with some things. And, and overall, like, you know, Bill and I, we just continued to talk through some stuff. And, you know, ultimately about a, I don't know, about a week ago, we, we came to this agreement that it was probably just best I, I remain where I am and uh, happy to do it. Just kind of Also, the sanctions, uh, the penalties from MLB after the Astro situation, and all that, just how he kind of kept things intact for you? Yeah, well, when we made a change after uh, the 2007 season, it was controversial, as you might imagine. And if you go back and look at the clips, um, <laughs> they weren't that uh, necessarily favorable from my perspective. Uh, but. You know, I was convinced that despite our run of success, and I, I, I was there through the whole thing, I knew how it was built, that's a tough model to continue, it was a tough model to continue, and I felt that we needed someone who could take us in a different direction and be all in um, from a analytic standpoint, a player evaluation standpoint, and financial standpoint. I did a search, and uh, in the, at the end of the day, Mo emerged, uh, didn't emerge, but he, he was the leading candidate, and we were able to uh, have him be the head of the organization from a baseball standpoint. Um, and, you know, over that long period of time, from then 15 years to now, he's really done a terrific job in building a culture, attracting people, taking risk, 
uh, under, you know, we're in a risk business. Uh, we just are. You sign a long-term contract, a player gets hurt, you're stuck uh, or doesn't perform. So you have to weigh all of that, and it's not an easy job. And he's really, uh, you know, hit the ground running because he'd been assistant GM, but still, there was a big learning curve, and the game changed too. So, you know, he really adapted to that and uh, uh, went full bore. And, and you know, where we are, where we are, which is a great run of success, and, and I think extremely well positioned for the future. And I've said that a lot of years, and it's you know, it's played out. So, uh, I think that answers your question. You might have one other thing there. But just, just about maybe presence too. Oh, going yeah, through the, there, the there difficulty. Some in the years I mean, where the, the organization needed a steady hand. Yeah. That, you know, obviously we we had some things over the years. Uh, you know, the hacking scandal. And, uh, you know, we had to flip to, a, you know, a, a new setup there to run our draft. Uh, which was difficult, and um, you know there have been other things that have occurred along the way where I think Mo's got a very, as you said, steady hand, and you know we have a problem, let's fix it. And I mean that's his mentality. It's not like oh what do I do now? I mean he figures out what to do, and uh, I think he's, I know he's highly respected that for those who work for him, that the whole operation there. You know, it's changed a lot in 15 years. We've got a, how many people do we have in our analytics department? I think 19 now. <laughs> 19. Um, and, you know, baseball ops has grown too. I mean, tremendously. So that's not an easy job to grow your people while you're trying to do the, you know, your day job, which is putting the best team on the field. And, you know, he's managed to do that. Highly regarded and respected by those who work for him, and that's part of the job. Mo, in an industry where this kind of stability is hard to find, what does it mean to you personally to be afforded the opportunity to kind of be able to have this contract, have the transition, have a hand in deciding how you want this to go? What does that just mean to you personally? Well, I think, like, first of all, it's a reflection of our relationship, and, and you know, it's more than just 15 years, but. You know, over that time, you know, we, we, we sort of understand each other. There's an ebb and flow between us. Um, you know, I think back to like my younger days, I used to always go in on Saturdays on the off season. And it might surprise you, but he was in Cincinnati in his, off, in his office on a Saturday. And so I think that kind of helped us connect and grow together. But, you know, we, we've, we've experienced a lot uh, between the two of us. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of highs and lows in, in this period. but. You know, I think it's it's really just mutual respect, and I think, think look, we both value stability. Um, if he didn't, I'd have probably been long gone. And and uh, but but here we are, and, and the people that we've worked with and, and associate with, I think have great appreciation for that as well. So, I guess to answer your question, I think it's a compliment and and one that I think we're both proud of. You went to basketball, where you place him sort of in the grander scheme, of Cardinals history, and what he's meant to the franchise, and what it would mean for Mo to be a guy who has a red jacket. Well, that's a very good point. So I'm not going to announce it in advance, but uh, <laughs> he certainly has the credentials to uh, uh, to be a, among that group. Uh, for one thing, he he acquired a, a bunch of those uh, players that we're now honoring, and uh, you know I think it was a good thing back when we started the Hall of Fame. And uh, the Cardinals have such a rich history that I was fortunate to. Uh, be able to inherit uh, when I came on the scene and you know as I said at the time and continue to say it my job is to keep it going I mean Cardinals are a great franchise and you know built way back in the early 20s even before and you know it's it's been an organization admired forever and the last thing we want to do is you know stop that continued growth so you can be sure we're making every effort to continue to, you know, do what it takes to have the Cardinals as admired as they were when we acquired the team. Hey Bill, when you look at Mo's resume, there's so many accomplishments. I want to ask specifically about the 
winning of the World Series in 2011. Can you put into words the importance of that being on his resume as you as you go forward? Well, yeah, you know, um, you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. Um, 2011 was just an incredible run at the end of the season. And I, I can't imagine any more excitement than, than what happened towards the end of the year there. And, uh, but, you know, to get there, we, there were a bunch of deals made and, and they played out and were a big part of, of why we got where we got. Uh, I remember when the David Freeze deal was made, we talked about it and, uh, you know, here, who, who could have known or guessed, but, you know, without David Freeze doing what he did, uh, you know, really incredible thing. So, uh, yeah, 2011 was special. Be nice to have another one of those special years uh, this year or sometime in, in the near future. I mean, for me, I think the, like the, the biggest short-term challenge is sort of managing this arms race, right? Like when you, when you think about what's happening in baseball, there, there's so much being invested in infrastructure of how you think about like from drafting, from development, to training, to performance. And I, and I think that's, you know, everybody's got to be a little careful, but everybody has to do what they think's best for, for, for them or their organization. And so, you know, that's one of the things I just sort of want to understand and, and, and work through with our team and our group because there's a lot of things people are chasing right now, and and they're chasing that for, for that edge, for that advantage. And, you know, I think one of the things that we've always been really good at is we, we walk before we run. We have an understanding of what that looks like. And I think over the last year or so, we may have gone off a little track on that, and I want to get back on that and, and just make sure that we have a very laser focus on what's next. Well, I think it goes back to the last 20 years. I mean, we're always looking to to make sure we're, we're making those right investments and, and making sure we're investing in the right people to do it. Well, I, I mean, I think there's always that, that, that time for, you know, a little bit of open collaboration and, and willing to try things. But as you can imagine, as your group gets bigger, you get more ideas and more ideas become the larger arms race or the chase. And so, you know, just sort of understanding where we really feel this group needs to go, I think is sort of next for us. When we talked to Yadi and, and Albert about legacy, they said that it was what goes on after they leave. If it, if it stays the same after they leave, that then that's a real legacy. How much pride do you take in that you've got the organization set up, even if you left in 2025, that it's able to be successful after that? Yeah, I don't know if I'm ready to answer that question because I'm not leaving today. Yeah, but, um, you know, I think uh, it's a compliment whenever you can. Uh, keep things rolling right again we in the last 15 years we really haven't had to take that time out or step backwards we've been able to keep progressing and you know that's the hope of this organization and that's the vision we have for the future